steps. <laughs> Look at the size of that is right. There you go, a couple of guys uh, I took fish in there, got on a good bite, and it was a pink bite, all right? Yeah, baby. <laughs> That's a day. That's a day. Them? What's that mean? That's the moral to this story right now. We're going to touch on just a little early season fluke fishing right now, and what exactly happens, and that's gonna be the squid run, all right? I drew a beautiful squid for you guys right now. I love when he draws. I could also put a squid up there if you like. Eh? That's not important. But the squid run, that's usually what happens when these fish, the fluke now start to migrate their way into Long Island Sound, and the ocean that is too, all right? They're following squid. Well, it's very cold, and what happens is Green Bay follows silver sides, spearing, sand deals, or whatever you say. But right now, we are gonna go to just touch base on squid, and just to reiterate, these how-to videos are just for new jacks here, all you other cats, I'm sure know how to catch a fluke and stuff like that. But I'm just throwing another thing into your arsenal of what happens in the beginning of the season when these flukes start to work their way in in the cold water, they're lethargic and they're kind of a little fugazi. All right, we're gonna to touch base on these guys, the squid, all right? Quick little uh, thing about squid. Just a little uh, body parts is what we need to know. The front is the fin, the body, the head, and the tentacles and the arms, all right? People think that they have a whole bunch of tentacles. It's not really true. Squid have two tentacles, these long ones right here. That's what happens when they want to go catch their little fish. And they grab them with the tentacles, bring them into their arms. The arms grab them and they, they eat them with their freaking sick, disgusting chompers. Right? It's like a little, I don't know what the hell you call it. It's like a beak. It's disgusting. Filthy animals. All right, but that's it. These two things right here are the eyeballs, all right? So basically what happens here, squid swims both ways, all right? It will swim forward to catch prey and grab it and also shoot this way to get it out of dodge, all right? So basically that's all you need to know about the squid. We're going to just touch base with, where's my pen? It's in my pocket. All right, let me just get my pen out here. This is really high-end stuff right now. I'm going to stick that on top there. All right, so basically what we're going to do is we're going to touch base on how we're going to rig this squid. We're going to go down to the shop in a little bit, and we're going to show you how to rig a double rig for this. But we're going to put one hook into here. All right, one hook goes right into the tip, and the other hook's going to come down the line, and it's going to hook into the head right about there. All right, so depending how big your squid are, that's how we're going to rig up our uh double hook rig, all right? So basically what we're doing is we're doing a double hook because you're gonna see in the video here, matter of fact, we'll touch base with it right now. You will see that these fish, these fluke now, as you're working it, what happens is these fish now, as they come and they follow that bait, they now swim with the bait forward. You don't even know there's a strike on this thing, all right? These fluke will just kind of mess with it. They'll bite that hook and they'll swim with the bait. They, they know it's good because it's, it's, it's a tasty bait. So these fish are gonna either go after that fresh squid rig that we set up with the tandem hooks, or it's gonna be a fugazi setup where we're gonna duplicate like a fake squid, all right? And that's gonna be done with a skirt, tandem rig, and we're gonna do a little fugazi work on that. We're gonna show you both techniques here. Matter of fact, I got some cool footage of what I'm talking about with the fake rig, but that's gonna be it. We're gonna show you that these fish now, yes, will they attack, of course, but you're gonna also see their behavior. And that's what I try to show in these videos is the fish behavior. Fish will now swim with you guys. I mean, if the boat's going this way, the, f the fish is swimming with you and you don't even know the fish is there. So what this tip's gonna be is you're gonna be fishing it, fishing it, fishing it, and what's gonna happen is you're gonna just ran you know, randomly lift that rod tip up. You're not gonna spook a fish, all right? These fish will not spook. I don't know who started that story, but they're not gonna spook. So you're gonna lift that up. Once you feel that weight, you're gonna blast them and say hello to them, all right? Because what's happening is you're going to pick up that slack as they swim forward, you can feel the weight and you're just going to blast them, all right? So that's what, you'll never see me say, don't set the hook. Blast them with the hook set and that's it. Once you set them and say load them, you got them. That's basically the story, all right? But know that that fish now can be swimming with you. There'll be a, a bow in the line. You don't even feel the strike, but that fish is there. So once you lift that rod tip up, you're moving that rod tip up from, say, here to here. You're moving that rod tip probably five to six feet in one shot. That's to pick up that slack, and then you get to say hello to that fish, all right? So that's it. I'm going to show you a little bit of underwater footage again of that fish now following that bait. You don't know who's there, and you're going to lift that hook up. You're going to feel the weight there, and you're going to blast them, all right? That's it. Not all these uh, strikes are like nibble, nibble, nibble. It's not like that. You're going to sometimes have dead sticks. I mean, so how many times have you guys had a dead stick out there, and you never see a dead stick move? The fish is already hooked up, either with a circle hook or whatever, and then you go reel a rod, and he's there, all right? He's there. He's on the line. That's exactly what I'm saying. That fish, for some reason, just swims with the boat's drift. It just does. I don't know why it does it, but it does it, all right? I'm not making this stuff up. This is the stuff that I see when I put my underwater cameras down there, and I try to give that information out to you guys, all right? So that's what it's going to be. We're going to go downstairs into the shop. We're going to show you what we're doing. 
how we're going to rig up for these guys and know that in the beginning of the season it's going to be just a, like a, like i call it the walt disney bike these fish are not ferocious right now they're freezing their nuts off all right they're very lethargic but they're going to eat and what they're going to eat first they're going to see that squid run that squid runs like anything is going to eat a squid run so there's going to be bycatch involved here there's squid bait you catch other stuff like that too just understand how to eat in the beginning of the season it's, it's like not exactly as aggressive when they're, when they're chasing green bait. They'll rip the freaking rod out of your hand because green bait obviously can get away. All those squid can too, but when you're dragging a dead bait, it's not going to get away. All right? So basically, again, rod tip, rod tip, rod tip. Because you're doing a three-way here, you want that, you know, we're going to do a fluorocarbon leader of 30 to 2, all right? Two 5 odd hooks are perfect. So we're going to do a fluorocarbon leader to two 5 odd hooks. 30 pound test of uh, fluoro and we're just going to work down the three way we're going to bounce that across the sea floor this this basically go like that and every once in a while you're going to lift up and drop it all right and this is not something that we're going to set up on a uh, a jigging rig this is going to be a conventional setup where we're just going to kind of work it on the sea floor as we drift you doing that of course is going to bring more fish again my theory of when the fish are looking up they'll see stuff drop and it's going to bring fish from a far end all right that's always a proven fact all right i believe it's in webster's dictionary on the kid cochise how you doing ladies all right uh let's go down to the shop all right folks welcome to the shop so this is what i'm talking about right here this is a shimano tranks right here three hondo and uh this is just a jigging world medium heavy acid wrap which i don't like acid wrap but this is a medium heavy acid wrap so that would be perfect for what i'm talking about all right you're going to just have that uh three-way hit the bottom we're going to get into that in a second but conventional is this is a conventional setup all right basically uh bait cast if that's what you want to call this one a spinner is a spinner conventional is a conventional here's another tranks right there i got two tranks power handle on this one all right but that's what we're doing all right, we're going to be working that across the sea floor. You guys can dead stick these two. Always very effective way to catch fish. Just on this note, if you guys are going to dead stick, make sure you just dead stick with a circle hook. If you're going to tie that rig, just put the hooks as circle hooks. But we're going to be uh, working the bottom, working the bottom. Every once in a while, just kind of move that, let it work, work. And then and we're going to lift up. And every once in a while, we're just going to blindly set that hook to see if that fish is on there. And that's it. Again, we're not going to scare those fish, so don't worry about that. All right, so that's it. So let's get into this uh, rig right now. You guys don't even want to see how much gear I have over there. My goodness. All right. Where are we? Hooks. All right, folks. I'm going to be doing this with 30-pound fluorocarbon, and these are going to be two four-odd or five-odd hooks, all right? Right here, these are nine-odds, and this is a 60-pound test. I'm doing the bigger stuff just so you guys can see what I'm doing here, all right? Hook number one. We're going to hook that baby. Probably not the smallest thing right there, but that's what we're going to do. All right? We're going to start out with an arm's length. We're going to start the first snell. Now, you guys remember the snells that we taught you before, right? We're going to leave a tag again because this is where the second hook is going to go. Over here. So we're going to take it. We're going to run it through the eye. All right, it's going to be all in line. And then we're going to take this, and we're just going to work our way back away from the eye. Ready? We're going to work and just keep wrapping it. Keep wrapping it. I hope you guys can see this. Keep wrapping it. Make sure you wrap it in a nice sequence here. Keep wrapping. Keep wrapping. Don't go over each other. Keep wrapping. Keep wrapping. Keep wrapping. Keep wrapping. Stop. I'm going to take the long tag end. Oh, what a terrible cut that was. Stand by. I apologize for that, but that's totally redneck right there. I was completely unprepared for that. I was totally right neck. All right, so now we have that long end. It's going to go through the eye, away from the hook, through the eye. We're going to pull it all the way forward, and we're going to pull this guy straight. Watch how that cinches up. Bingo. Damn, that's tight as hell. All right, so that's your first hook. That's going to be a head hook. This is going to be a tail hook here. Got the one hook here. We're going to do a hollow knot. To the second hook and remember you want to make a little you want to make that a little closer because when you pull that knot tight it's going to separate just a little bit so we're going to keep that fairly close to the uh, single hook the first hook go for our palm knot palm knot is very easy i'm not going to show you how to do that you guys should know that by now if not look at my knot video all right that's the palm knot right there that's it all right beautiful let me just trim that tip right there all right boom 
trimmed. That's it right there. I'm going to go upstairs now because I forgot what I need to get. This is our bait. Six inches apart. Remember, this is going to go through the tail, the fins of it, which is basically I had that backwards. The head is the front of the, of the squid and the, the fins are basically the back of the squid. But this is going to go through the fins. This is going to go through the head. And I'm going to show you something real quick. I'm going to just keep letting this film because I'm going to run upstairs and get it. Oh, I'm back. Oh, I am back. All right. These are... Wait, my hook there with us. I don't know if you guys ever saw these things before. But basically, all they are is slider skirts, whatever you want to call them. They're like mylar, high, you know, high visibility type of jobbies. I will open that up. Take one of these bad boys out of here. Come on. I'm going to feed this all the way down. Again, we're using 30 pound fluorocarbon, two four rod, two five rod hooks. And we're going to drop this skirt all the way down it. And that's what it's going to look like. It's obviously going to be a smaller version of this because we have smaller hooks and smaller leader. You don't need the mylar for this quid, but if you're going to do a, a bait where you're going to take a bluefish belly, you're going to take a sea robin belly, or a fluke belly for that matter, technically you do it the right way, you're going to put it on. You're going to have the second hook here and a long leader, not a long leader, it's probably, I'd say, four foot leader. And you go through a three way where you could drop a sinker on it, right? You're gonna hook this into a sinker. I don't think I have that, but you guys know what I'm talking about. Basically, conventional fluke rigs that you get in the store, all right? But this is just basically exactly the same thing as that, but you're pulling a big bait. You're gonna be pulling a double hooked squid or a big body bait, all right? Like the one you see in this video right here. This type of fishing, though, is important that you are wind and tide, same way. Remember when you have a wind against tide stuff. You're going to start wrapping. Those things aren't going to play nice. It's not going to draw through the water right. The water's going to be pushing this way. The wind's going to be pushing this way. It's going to bring up spaghetti of, of those long leaders. It happens all the time. So be careful with that. What happens when we do that? We go to rat patrol, all right? That's why these rats are very good for that. These rats will catch a lot of fish, and they'll never foul up on you, okay? It's a leader straight down to a rat and a bait, all right? These baits I'm talking about, these squid baits or these big body baits of any type of bait, like a bluefish, sea robin, fluke, whatever the heck you want to use, you want to use it with wind and tide, where they're both going the same way, where you're going to have a perfect pull through the water, right? If it's a slow pull, still, you can get away with it. But if you have a good pull, if you're, if you're doing one mile an hour, 0.7, you know, stuff like that, your money, all right? Or anything. If you're doing the true pull, you'll know when you're doing it because you're going to scope out. You'll be going the right direction, and, you, and your stuff's going to come up clear every time. When you when you don't have that, it's going to be a crime scene. All right, you're going to be all wrapped up, and it's not going to work. So this fishing right here we're going through today is wind and tide working together, drifting right through. Great in the ocean, all the other stuff. Again, we're going to be lifting that rod tip up periodically and then we're just gonna be setting that freaking hook randomly you know because we don't know if that fish now is swimming with it when you feel a strike of course blast them but when you don't just keep going work it work it work it work it let it sit work it work it work it let it sit and then just arbitrarily lift that rod tip up if you feel weight set that hook all right uh i hope you guys enjoyed this video I hope it made a little bit of sense to you have fluke behavior. Yeah, it's a lot of different behavior, obviously, but it's good to see with your own eyes that how fluke behave. Sometimes they will attack. Beginning of the season, they're a little more lethargic. They'll start swimming with it, messing with bait. Crazy ass fish, all right? They mess with their baits. They toy with their baits. They'll come after a live bait and just mess with it for a while and then kill it. All right? I don't know what the heck that's about. But that's the life of a fluke, all right? All right, so uh, you guys want to follow the kid on Instagram? Do so. All right, if you want to subscribe, consider subscribing below. I appreciate that. Please uh, like it below. And that's that. Until next time, we are going to go out there and start fishing. All right, I got to get, I'm going to go out there, have some uh, stuff lined up. We'll be going up to Hudson. We're going to be fishing. We're keeping it real fishing up there with Captain Chris. We're going to be doing that pre spawn stuff up, uh, up at the river. I got to tighten stuff up with him up there, and we got other stuff we got to be doing. So, con shadows are coming. Videos are coming. Fishing videos are coming, all right? So stay tuned. we got some really good episodes coming at you. We appreciate you watching. We do. I really do appreciate you watching, all right? The con is strong, bro. All right? Take care, everybody. Brush your hair. You know where I got to go.